Hello and welcome back to the channel. Lord Kao here with part two of our Californication series. Uh, this week we'll be taking a look at uh, some of the best duos within Californication, specifically my personal favorite, uh, Hank and Batesy. Uh, we'll be diving into why I think this is definitely by far Californication's best overall character dynamic and some of the, the, the strengths that they have, as well as kind of looking at what really makes a really strong duo. Uh, within Californication as a series. We'll take a look at some that are kind of underwhelming, some that are pretty good as well, and why this edged out the competition in my mind. Sorry for the bit of a delay uh, with getting this next video out. As you can see, I'm in a new place and stuff like that. Uh, so that kind of caused a little bit of a delay, but we'll, we'll do part two and then hopefully part three and part four will be out. Hopefully by mid-November at the absolute latest. If you have any ideas as to what you want to do or what you guys want to do as far as part three and part four, let me know. I think one I definitely want to do is going to be taking a look at Hank overall as a character, like a, a, a Hank Moody character analysis, like breakdown as far as what makes him such a compelling character and why why he allows us to kind of revisit the, the series over and over again, because he's very a very interesting character in the work of fiction overall. So we'll probably do that for number three. So number four is kind of up in the air. I'll kind of pull the audience, Twitter, YouTube comments, and we'll take a look and see what kind of makes sense on that front. But if you're new to the channel, definitely uh, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, uh, give me a shout on Twitter, uh, links below also should be on the video as well. But let's go ahead and jump into it. We're gonna take a look at why I think Hank and Batesy are hands down the best duo within Californication. Let's go. Hank and Batesy, uh, one of Californication's most loved duos, easily one of the best examples of pure unmitigated chaos in almost every scene that they share, whether it be Hank covering for Batesy hooking up with the hooker or the ever looming presence of that glorious mangina. Let's take a look back at why I believe this to be one of Californication's best duos. Now, as per usual, I did a bit of a polling from the fam over at Our Californication to see where the room was at as far as the community's favorite relationships throughout the series. While we encountered a lot of the same usual suspects on the feedback list, um, outside of, hmm, let's see, this all looks like, what is it? Well, yeah, like I was saying, we had a lot of series staples from Hank and Becca to Runks and Colini or even Marcy and Karen. Needless to say, the show has a lot of strong duos that generally do a great job of evolving organically over time and dealing with the new curveballs that life throws at them. But what makes Hanks and Batesy my pick for best duo? Well, to answer that question, first we'll want to analyze what makes any uh, show's friendships feel both relatable and entertaining to general audiences. Let's take a look at one of the most popular duos of all time, Chandler and Joey from Friends. While Chandler generally comes across as more of the everyman and the more relatable of the two, uh, he's generally the audience's POV or look into this, this actual dynamic that they have. It's him playing off of Joey's eccentric and offbeat nature that ties them together in a very perfect formula. story. While Hank and Batesy are much more of a less realistic portrayal of a run-of-the-mill relationship we're likely to encounter on a daily basis, as opposed to Chandler and Ross, let's be real. What's the odds of seeing the mangina being revealed not once, but twice? It is the absurdity and over-the-top nature of Californication that kind of allows the audience to buy into the dramatics that this duo so often relishes in. So to understand what makes Hank and Batesy such a good dynamic, Let's take a look at what many of us would consider to be a bad Californication duo, Hank and Young Samurai Apocalypse. While it was clear with this season, the writers were going for a very different approach, like come on, let's take a look at that promotion poster, Hank and Samurai failed to live up to any of the heights of Hank's other counterparts from previous seasons. Now this stems from a number of different core dynamics between both Hank and Sam, with Sam being a atypical alpha male rapper, actor? A raptor? Hank Morty. Son, nigga. Hank never really seems to be able to build any real synergy or meaningful connection with Sam in the way that he was able to with any of his previous duos. The Lady Lawyer, any one of the people present during his college arc of season three, and definitely a far cry from the insane onset synergy of both him and Lou Ashby. 
in a nutshell, due to the initially established dynamics between Hank and Sam, uh, Hank is really never giving an opportunity to be Hank. He's pretty much relegated to being a constant underling of Mr. Samurai Apocalypse, which makes for some of the most bland dialogue and onset chemistry of any duo of the show. In fact, curious enough, it's actually his and Batesy's relationship within that same season that makes some of the most rewarding and entertaining aspects of the entire season. It pretty much single-handedly saves that entire season from being totally unwatchable at times. Now that we've discussed what I believe is a bad duo, let's dive into why I think Hank and Batesy edges out the competition to be the best. First off, bar none, these two characters probably have the best character to character intro from being established immediately that Batesy is not to be around alcohol due to his previous addictions, culminating in a spectacular relapse and the unveil of the glorious Mangina. From their initial introduction, Hank is immediately a self-professed fan of Batesy's previous work, setting up a very similar mentor-mentee vibe that will often be played numerous times throughout the series. I love the initial narrative underpinnings that the writers use to make Hank and Batesy a mirror image of themselves. I mean, they are essentially the same in many ways, with there are some exceptions. May you ever been so drunk on cock, you howled at the moon and begged for a few inches more. And depending on their story arc at any time, one's generally painted as the evil twin that has given into the chaos and one being the, the good guy. That's kind of the role that they flip flop as the series progresses. Reappearing and back in action for season five and married to the love of Hank's life, the stage is already set for Hank and Batesy to continuously clash as Hank continues his endless quest to get his girl back. As the season progresses, one thing becomes quite clear that the writing for both Hank and Batesy's interactions uh, was pretty much off the charts for this season. Both of them channeling their inner quippy smartass to the hundredth degree and effortlessly keeping each other uh, in check through, throughout their numerous sparring matches that take place as the season unfolds. Lindsay report over here. Watch your tone, Hank. The woman you're disrespecting is currently under my jurisdiction. Mind your business, Bates. See, we happen to be talking about a child that we share. Keep it up, sweetheart, and you and I are going to end up back on that dance floor, you hear me? Oh, I hear you, dick, and I'd be happy to dance with you anytime, anywhere, you pansexual fucking weirdo. <laughs> it's like I'm getting your Irish up there, no, son. No, not at all. Care for a drink? You'd probably like that. I you? would. Let's see that fucking man, John. This is one of the first time in the series that it's clear that Hank has actually met his intellectual equal in Batesy in a way that hasn't been demonstrated previously throughout the series. While we love duos like Hank and Lou, their relationship really never culminated in Lou pushing Hank to be a better person or challenging him in the same way that Batesy does on several occasions. Being on the same career path as a writer and also struggling with the relationships and drinking prowls allows Batesy to see Hank's worldview in a more complete manner than any other castmates. Yes, even the Runks. Speaking of Runkle, while this is most likely the de facto friendship that most people think of when looking back on Californication, the general dynamics of the relationship seem to be more entrenched in more of a running familiarity than actual growth and development. For the general part of the, of the entire season, hell, the entire series actually, the relationship is just pretty much um, you know, they're just regular friends. There's not really a lot that goes into it. They have each other's back, but there's not really any like true growth moments. Uh, really the only one that I could really think of is when Charlie, you know, he realized that he fucked up when he, when he signs Becca's boyfriend and he takes a bullet for Hank when Sam, when Sam Mar tries to shoot Hank at the end of the season. That's pretty much the only thing I could think of. That was the one time that he really realized how much Hank meant to him and he had truly fucked up. Uh, outside of that, the status quo is typically always held up, um, and in life, it's always really good to have somebody in your corner who's really trying to push you and challenge you to be different. That's one of the key differences between the Hank and Runkle dynamic and the Hank and Batesy dynamic. And yes, this brings us to the apex of the Hank and Batesy dynamic, and the arc that really, in my eyes anyway, really solidified their synergy. Starting with Hank covering for Batesy's wild ass night out with the stripper, yeah, you remember her? Hank actually goes against his own best interests in multiple different ways to actually help cover for Batesy's indiscretion, including drawing the great ire of both of the girls in his life. Yeah, remember this? Oh. You think this is funny? Do you see anyone laughing? I'm so sick and tired of you showing up out of nowhere and fucking with our lives. Like somehow you know better. 
You make a mess and then you waltz off, like you've done something noble. But we have to clean up after you. Let this be a lesson to you, Dad. Stay the fuck away. This to me was a very poignant episode displaying the level of respect and growth the relationship had endured. Let's be real here. Can any person here watching this video say that if you were caught cheating on your wife, the first person you would go to is a person you know is the love of her life? Raise your hand if that's you. The dynamic between Hank and Batesy is so interesting in the fact that they trust each other immensely and they respect each other immensely despite all the like subtle jabs and stuff like that that hank throws out and you know Batesy understands what he's doing he knows that hank and karen will always kind of they'll have a thing you know regardless if he's married or not and he understands and respects that this is further ex exemplified by when hank's going away party when Batesy is caught in yet another compromising position i know just in different emotional zip codes right now. And I'll say you're in fucking emotional West Hollywood right now. He asks Hank to still be appropriate with his wife despite the absolute lunacy that he's put Hank through over the last week or so. It strikes as a very stark contrast from a lot of the other dynamics that our lead and supporting characters share throughout the series. One of the main reasons is that the seasons uh, generally wipe the slate clear of all supporting characters and they only leave a few remaining to progress from season to season as the series unfolds. And while I'm not in love with the, uh, this choice overall, it does make the ones that stick around, the remaining supporting characters, a chance to really develop into a meaningful manner that completes their story arcs in a really meaningful way. So shout out to them for picking, I think they actually did pretty well in picking Eddie Nero, uh, Batesy, Trixie. They did a pretty good job of keeping the, the fan favorites in. So those are pretty much the gen general reasons why I think that the Hank and Batesy dynamic is really well done. You know what I mean? It's my personal favorite. It's not the de facto, this is just an opinion, but I definitely think that out of all the relationships, and I've watched this damn show way too many times, of all the ones that are showcased, this is the one that strikes me as the most genuine, you know, and the one that really tried to, to teach Hank something, you know, about himself, about relationships, about his dynamic with Karen. Becca, all that stuff, what he's willing to do for the woman he loves. You know, I don't know. I don't think anybody expected Hank to really try and go that far to maintain the Batesy and, and Karen union. You know what I mean? That, that really showed the audience a lot. And it showed us a lot about what Hank actually, what it means to him for his family to be happy, even if it's not with him. And that, that's a lot of character growth right there. So that's definitely why that's one of my favorite seasons, as well as why I think that this arc is beautifully executed during that entire season. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap here. Let me know below in the comments what you think your favorite duo is. Uh, drop a comment if you are new here. Definitely make sure you subscribe, turn on the notifications, and I will see you in part three, guys. Peace out.